So uh, one of the, you know, of course, and I think we've talked about this before, you know, Orthodox Mormons are waiting for ex-Mormons to fail. They, they right. in fact, they've, they've all been conditioned or some would say brainwashed to, you know, to believe that you can't be happy and healthy without the church. And then of course, with their confirmation bias, they're, they're just waiting for us to have our, you know, to, to struggle as individuals, mm -hmm. to become alcoholics or drug addicts or whatever, to have our marriages end, you know, divorce or whatever, right. and then to see our kids struggle. And it's all going to be just, it's all going to flow to their confirmation bias. See what, that's what happens when you leave the church. Like on the one hand, many of us who are, who are ex-Mormon have wanted to keep our marriage uh, marriages alive if for no other reason than to not fulfill the stereotypes, right? Um, to not have our parents or family members, believing parents or family members say, see, that's what happens when you leave the church, you get divorced. You've been through a divorce and a semi-slightly public divorce, and now you're, what, five years, you know? I think we we split in 2012, so nine years, nine years ago. And then you've been married to Kimmy for... We well we, we we moved in together. We were living in sin, but we got <laughs> we got married on paper in 2016. So there 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 are all sorts of uh, bad Orthodox Mormon marriages, and um, you know th there's plenty of people right now who have been divorced or who are going through hard marriages or will become divorced, and there's just a lot of stigma and a lot of shame. And it's a really charged topic. So it, it go is. off on divorce and and marriage and ex Mormonism and Mormonism. Well, and we were talking else. before about X and then XX and then XXX. <laughs> and it's it, it's it's funny that that you know you say the Mormons are kind of watching to look for failure in 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 ex Mormons' lives, or at least that's the perception that ex Mormons have often. Well, well, that sword cuts two ways. Ex Mormons do the same thing to Mormons. They 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 parade out failures. You know, oh, this guy was successful in the church, but neglected his family, and da 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 da. da. What what it really is is it's a it's a war about lifestyle choices. But this goes back to our our perverse American culture that the the American culture is the Thunderdome, right? Only one two enter the th the dome. Or either 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 ex Mormons have the right way of living, or Mormons have the right way of living. Ex Mormons have problems with their marriage. Mormons have problems with their marriage. And when you have something that shows up both sides equally, it is not a factor. And that's where a lot of these things, like ex-Mormons are going to struggle in their marriage. And Mormons are going to struggle in their marriage. And and Jehovah Witnesses struggle in their marriage. And Catholics struggle in their marriage. And and, 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 and people who have arranged marriages struggle. So, so, so some of it we have to start, we have to, we have to put down our guns a little bit. Now, that being said, Mormonism is a sex cult. And What do you mean by that? <laughs> what I mean by that is Mormonism as it exists today is absolutely obsessed with with, with human sexuality and in very unhealthy ways. And as I've progressed through my life, I've come to believe that, that, that Mormonism has sexuality 180 degrees wrong all the time. <laughs> Everything that they say about sex is, is wrong. You know, from, from, from the normal cycle that, that, is, that is biologically programmed of falling in love with somebody, there's a progression to it. And you can see it in people who don't have puritanical upbringings. They, they, they become sexual when they both feel it. Like for, for Mormons, it's oftentimes they can be very sexual, but holding it back. And then suddenly it's sanctioned by the church so that the church still climbs in and, and, and tells people, okay, you need to watch your partner's download history. If they're, if they're, if they're looking at pornography, then that's cheating. If Put they're, a spam filter on, or yeah, a yeah. porn filter all on. All these things that, that, that promote unhealthy relationships. And, of course, you know, like I famously, I got engaged after three weeks, right? And, and, and Zilpha was a great person, and, and we, had, we had some fun years, but we weren't, we weren't right for each other. And that's why, that's why we got a divorce. Um, and, and because Mormonism so infuses itself into every part of human intimacy, sexuality and relationships and defines how they should go and tells you if this is happening, that's good and that's bad or whatever, it, it, it very well, it very much prescribes exactly how you have to live. And that's this intergenerational thing that this next generation, once we're all out of the way, they don't bother, they don't worry about who people sleep with. It doesn't define them like it did for our generation. And that's why our generation can't wrap our heads around it. And the church sure as shit can't wrap its head around it because it uses it to control people. 
It uses it to control missionaries. It, 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 it keeps people feeling broken. Because what the church tells you is that normal sexuality, both solo, what you think. I mean, there's, there's you can find whole Sunday school lessons that tell you if you think um, sexual feelings, that you're somehow create, committing a sin. That is not how sex works. <laughs> like, it is not a product of, of one's imagination. Like, like as for most of us, when we went through puberty, if we weren't screwed up by, by, by these puritanical churches, you'd realize that sexual urges are a natural part of, of, of human growth as they are a part of the propagation of the species, right? You can learn a lot about human sexuality by watching animals because you see that the things that we all like condemn oftentimes are very prevalent. It's part, it's part of what we are. It's part of our DNA. And, and so this, this divorce thing is because the church infuses itself into these relationships and puts itself in between, in between partners and says this is okay and this is not okay and this is who you can love and this is who you can't love, it sets people up. For me and for many like us, um, for Zilpha and I, our marriage was propped up and pushed and propagated and scheduled by the church. I will admit I have some residual anger uh, to my parents and the people around me because not one person, not one adult in my life said to me when I got engaged after three weeks, you might want to slow your roll there, Johnny. Not one person in the church said that. They were all overjoyed, and they should have known better, and they did know better. And that's why religions need to go away, because they train smart people to act stupid. So, but, but divorce. Divorce is hard. But for many people, it's absolutely the right choice. And for others, it's not. Relationships, they wave in and out, you know, and, and if you put energy into a relationship. But if two people are fundamentally, if you're married to somebody who believes that you are a son of perdition and you're going to spend all of eternity like roasting in outer darkness, run away from that person as fast as you can. <laughs> but take care of your kids, right? Because you cannot have a loving, giving relationship with somebody who thinks you're an eternal criminal. Or you, even just a disappointment. Or just a disappointment. Yeah, yeah that's bad too. <laughs> that's absolutely bad. But some people struggle with marriages. Others don't. Brigham Young was divorced, what, 14 times? I can't remember the number. A whole bunch of times, right? Yeah. Um, and And... Divorce is, is, a, is a symptom. It's like surgery. You're like, oh, is it bad to cut into somebody's body? Well, it depends on the circumstance, you know. If you're walking out of the 7-Eleven, then by all means. But, you know, if you're, getting, if you're getting your pancreatic cancer taken out, then yes, surgery is good. Same with divorce. So I have no, I will not tell anybody they should get divorced or they shouldn't. They, that's what they've got to figure out themselves. So stipulating that Zilpha is great and we love you, Zilpha, and... Not asking for you in any way to disparage the, the what you guys had together. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about how uh, your relationship with Kimmy has been a, a good thing for you? Yeah, and maybe yeah. even for others. Yeah, Kim, Kimmy, my wife. She, um, we, we are really. Uh, I don't believe in anything like soulmates, but we really are aligned in what we want out of life how we um, treat one another. We're both very um, um, empathetic people, um, and we're both very um, deferential. We, we give a lot. So I oftentimes get hurt in my relationships in the bigger world because I'll give a lot more than I kind of get back in return, which after a while you kind of shed those, those relationships. Like, Hopefully. Like when I left Facebook, you know, I, I would have said, oh, I have 400 friends. And even though my phone number didn't change, I would say of those 400 friends, 360 never, never contacted me again. Even though we might have been interacting day by day, it's just that that relationship was mitigated by Facebook and the relationship didn't have enough roots. It, it hurt me at the time. Now I just see that's, that, that's, what, that's what happens. So Kimmy and I are we're on the same page. We care about each other. We love one another. There's not, there's not friction in the relationship. And the difference between a good relationship that I had with Zilpha, but we would have never gotten together if it wasn't the church. And when the church went away, then we had less reason to stay together. And the, um, and the relationship I have now with Kimmy is, is, is night and day. So that's why, you know, and, and the reason, the joke, I've, I've said that lots of times in my podcast, that when people get divorced, you say, congratulations. Because we automatically go to, oh, I'm sorry. We automatically color it dark where it might be the greatest day of both their lives. You never know. And, and for, so there's going to be listeners that, that married their soulmate, mm -hmm. uh, 
and stay with them and have a great life. Uh, or, or they married someone that they're fundamentally compatible with. There's going to be a lot of listeners that right now are in marriages where they're fundamentally incompatible. And they're like, well, I can't get, even if they're ex-Mormon, they're going to be like, well, divorce isn't an option. I can't get divorced. I shouldn't get divorced. They'll think it'll hurt the kids. I can't get divorced because it'll hurt the kids. Or it's selfish to get divorced. Or or they'll be thinking, um, well, I'll take my problems with me no matter what. If I'm not getting along here, I'll find a new partner and there'll be some initial excitement but then that'll peter out and then I'll be, you know, wherever you go, there you are. And I'll, I'll have problems there too. Can you talk about how things are different at, at a slightly deeper level when you're with someone with whom you are fundamentally compatible? What are the differences and, and what's that like? What's that been like for you? And it can- doesn't feel like work. If, if your relationship is something you're working on all the time, then in my view, it's not the right relationship. But look, John, if I train for a marathon, even if I train my hardest, I'm not going to break the three hour mark. Like it's not in my genetic code. I've met a lot of people and I've only met two that I wanted to be married to, right? There are a lot of people out there who are just bad at relationships. And I, I think we, we, ne- we don't talk about this. Like there's a lot of people who they're, they're closed off or they, they're, they're, that we should encourage more people to be single we should encourage more people to have serial relationships that are not high stakes because not everybody is, is of the mindset and Eastern religions, Hinduism, Buddhism deals with this a lot more. And we talk about householders versus other people and say, if that's the way you want to live, then go live that way. But it's not required for it for everybody. So I, I think we're chasing that American dream. Kind of like I was bagging on before for some of you, it's you and you're only going to get a 60% relationship because it's you. <laughs> Right. And, and if, 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 if somebody really understands that about themselves, they're going to be much happier because marriage is not for everybody. And it's not like if you just find the right person that you'll, you'll, you'll be happy. So, but I think culturally where the advantage that the younger generations have is they're willing to experiment around with that a little bit more to figure out who they are and who they want to be in terms of a marriage. Right. But I think, I think all forms of marriage can be the right form for the right people open marriages, uh, polygamous marriages, monogamous marriages. It depends on you. Non-marriage. Non-marriage, single life. Single life. It depends on you and your partner. And, and if everyone could get honest and just say, you know what, I really don't want to be married because I like limerence. I like falling in love. And after two or three years, I want to do that again. Okay. Just as long as you're upfront with everybody, as long as everybody's honest, you're going to be much happier. So I don't know. I'm not giving you any, any good answers. I've just said. No, these are very good answers. 